What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. So recently I've had this thought that I've never really fully explained 16 levels on the SP404 Mark II and how it can be so useful for beat making. So that is exactly what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to show you guys how you can apply this to your hi-hats in particular and use that to add just a little bit more spice to your beats and drum loops just to give you that extra little edge and make everything sound a little bit better. So all these little details that you add into your beats are going to be the difference between you being a beginner and you being a more advanced beat maker. So hopefully this is one of those things that you can add to your arsenal. Now those of you that are relatively well seasoned to beat making, you probably already know about this technique. And I do want to say before I start this video that this is not specific to the SP404 Mark II. This is my weapon of choice for this particular video, but by all means use your own samplers for this one. Most modern samplers should have 16 levels built in. It's an integral part of beat making, so have a look around your menus, I'm sure you'll be able to find it. Okay, so I have this hi-hat sound here, which I'm going to demonstrate with. All the drums I'm going to use in this video are from Lo-Fi Drums Volume 5. If you want to support what I do here, check out the links in the description, it would really be appreciated. So I've got a kick, snare and a hi-hat, and I'm going to go ahead and put this hi-hat into 16 levels. So the first thing we need to do is just select it. You can do that by pressing the pad or you can hold the value wheel down and press the pad and that will select it without making it sound. Next, we just need to hit shift and two and you can see here under two, it says 16 velocity. We can go into there and this will apply to the hi-hat sound. Now what this has done is taken that sample and put it into 16 different velocities, evenly fading down from one all the way up to 127. You can see there on the screen and the pattern that it goes is left to right and works its way up like this. So four is the loudest of the collection of pads here and 13 is the quietest. I can demonstrate that obviously by pressing the pads for you guys. You can hear there that I'm getting a kind of fade effect by doing that and this can be used to do that as well. You will hear this in classic kind of golden era hip hop a lot on horn samples. So you'll have a horn stab and you can kind of fade it out. There you can hear you can kind of fade in and fade out the sample of choice. Obviously that was a hi-hat, not a horn. But this can also be used really effectively on hi-hats and I love using this on hi-hats. I think it really can add a lot of difference to your beats. And what this is going to do is kind of emulate an actual drummer playing the drums instead of just this robotic kind of quantized programmed single hi-hat sound like this. So I'll give you a demonstration. Obviously that repetition can get very, very boring. So to mix things up, you can start playing around with the velocity. It'll add a much more dynamic feel to your hi-hat patterns and it'll get them feeling a little bit nicer too. So instead of just hitting that same velocity over and over again, what I can do is start going in and adding a little bit of variety. So here we go. And already you should be able to hear there that it's starting to get a little bit more feel into it. So if I was to do that again, straight on the same velocity, sounds pretty dull, and then this. Okay, and as an example here, I have got two drum loops set up on the pattern mode. So you can use 16 levels with the pattern mode, which is really, really good on this device. And obviously with other devices, you will be able to as well. So this is a straight beat with no 16 levels on the hi-hat. This is just hitting at exactly the same velocity every single hit. So hopefully you could hear there, it was hitting the same every single time. Now we don't want that, we want to add a little bit more character, we want to add a little bit more feel, that's exactly what a drummer would do if he was drumming, he wouldn't be hitting the hi-hat exactly the same velocity on every single hit, he would be adding some groove and some feel by varying that around and that's what we can do with 16 levels. So here is an example using 16 levels on the hi-hats and I've literally copied across the kick and snare to a new pad and then overlaid a new hi-hat. So this isn't perfect, but it gives you an idea of what you can achieve relatively easily. So 
So you could hear there, there was a few that were a little bit too quiet, but overall that is sounding way, way more dynamic. It's got a way more exciting feel to it and it's got a lot more groove to it as well. So we definitely want to include that in our hi-hats. Now, if I go back into 16 levels again, if we come out of there, the way that I usually use this is in a kind of pumping way. So on the first beat of every bar, that's when I will play the accent. So I'll have the loudest one on the first beat of every bar. So if we count one, two, three, four, it'll be something like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So every time on the one, I'm hitting four, ironically. And then I'm just using some variety below to flesh that out. So like I mentioned from my example, you don't want to go too quiet because they can get lost quite easily. So you want to do a bit of random variety, but try and stick around the kind of five to 12 mark here. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and then using four for the accent. So let's do another quick example. So instead of that, you could extend how long the gap is between that main accent that we're doing with four there. We could extend that a little bit and make it sound even more interesting. So we could do something like this instead. Okay, missed a couple there accidentally, but you kind of get the idea. Whatever length you want to do with that accent, you can kind of vary that up if you want to get slightly different feels. So then all that you need to do is go ahead and record that over your kick and snare, and that's going to add a lot more feel and groove to your beats. It's going to make your hi-hat loop sound way more dynamic, like I mentioned, and you're trying to get that realistic sound of a drummer, and overall it's going to definitely help your beats a lot. It's a classic technique for hip-hop and lo-fi hip-hop, and it's definitely something that you should be including. You will see this name associated quite a lot with Jay Diller, and rightly so. He's very much a pioneer of these really swung and groovy kind of drum loops, and this will definitely be a technique that you'll hear associated with his name quite a lot. Do you really need any other reason to include it in your beats? If Jay Diller was doing it, we should be doing it as well, for sure. So I hope you find this one interesting, guys. I know it's quite a beginnerish kind of tip, but you can use 16 levels on hi-hats to really, really good effect to add a lot more spice to your beats. Like I mentioned, if you want to pick up my drum pack, use the link in the description and it will be on my site there. I'll be back with another beat-related video very soon. Yeah, but